and welcome. I am Johnny B. And I'm the Restless Kaiser, but together we are... Modeling, Modeling for Advantage! Whoop whoop! Boom! Right then, Kaiser, you've yes, bought yet mate. another box oh, of Flames of War. I love me one of these Flames of War starter boxes, mate. So this is somewhat different as this seems to be an Axis Minus. Axis Minus, that's the big release at the moment. Finns, Romanians and Hungarians. Hungarians. Now, according to this box, we're going to get four Zirini Assault Guns, three Stug Assault Guns, three Hetzers, three Panthers, and four 10.5 centimeter howitzers. Okay. An A5 rule book, a Hungarian start here booklet, two decal sheets, and seven unit cards. Mm, blimey. Interesting. And it says on the front, just if you were unclear or can't count, that there are 13 vehicles and four guns. Let's get this fella open and see what we've got inside. Come on, let's do it. Do it now. What's that? A spicy smell. What's that smell? Spicy. It is... Paprika! Mm, I see. That's how you know it's Hungarian, mate. <laughs> it's, made, it's made with, with goulash, uh, infused in every sprue. Ooh, that sounds Ooh. nice. See, you know what? It's a thinner box. It's a thinner box, but it is uh, tight. A, a robot packed mine, uh, packed by C21 DLA, or Dlar, fact. Oh. Let's get the chaff out of the way. A5 rule book. It's handy if you haven't got the rules or if you have friends, you can give it to them. Give it to them. What's we'll that? sort these piles out and we'll be right back. All right, so should we talk about the paper bits and then we'll do the unit cards as we go through the individual sprues. Paper bits. How does that sound? So you mentioned the rule book. As I say, it's nice to include one of these in most of the start sets. You've probably got loads of them if you collect flames. Yeah, well, if true. you do it the way we do it, which is to buy the starter box sets and then box. try and make armies out of them, <laughs> you've got loads of these. Uh, we even give them away on a live stream sometimes because we've got lots. Then, start force. Hungarian start it? force. I like these, these little, little start pullouts, here. start here booklets to give you a little bit of wisdom. Yes. It tells you a little bit about, you know, the Zarina here. After their experience against the Soviets on the Eastern Front, the Hungarian military wanted more assault guns to take on the hordes of Soviet armor. It goes on. Yeah. But what's really nice about this, um, among other things, you get a nice bit of art uh, on the front, because they show you the models on the box now, rather than art, you see? Yes. So you get the, you get the artwork, and then you get the build instructions. Again, with these, they usually only give you the build instructions to build it the way it has been pointed. Right. And the way it's provided unit cards. If there are obvious examples where I know different when we go through, I will point it out. Okay. Um, and then on the back there, it gives you a sample army. What you could build for 100 points with this list. Does it? Yeah, oh, it yeah. does. And here is my first problem with the box. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It says in here that you can make a 100-point list out of this box. Oosh. But it says you can do that by having a Hetzer platoon of five hetzers. There are definitely only three hetzers in this box. It says it on the box, three hetzers. There's three sprues, it says and three we hetzers on the box. Physically. Army list. So, yeah. Um, is that a problem? Well, potentially not in so far as like, oh, there's a, you know, a typo or whatever, but actually this box does feel a bit light compared to a lot of the 80 pound boxes. Right. And if the original intention was to stick a couple more, they just boost up that as that kind of value proposition, I think, just a little bit. I don't know whether it was an availability thing later on, whether it's a bit of a mismatch between the per people who wrote yeah, this it and might, people who made it the box. Just been an, it might have been a dude slipping from number three to number five accidentally on the print. But then the points <laughs> would be wrong as well. Exactly. Yeah, okay. A lot of these boxes you can't build 100 point lists with because some of the armies are just too cheap in <laughs> terms of points cost. All right, so that's that. And then we've got a decal sheet as well. We've got a couple here. Yes. Boop. Do, 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 so what's do, different do. with this? What's different with this? Well, this so this is a cool decal sheet because you've got Balkan crosses, right? Which they come with, but then you've got the um, Hungarian ones. So in the late war, in like 1944, I think they started to like repaint the outside, the black bits of the Balkan cross in red, just to denote they were Hungarians. Okay. 
Um, whether they thought they would get better treatment at the hands of the Soviets, oh, really? or whether it was just pride in the fact that they were Hungarians, yeah. not Nazis. But originally, they just left the German markings on. You've also got number plates. Yes. You've got number plates, which you often go and get on 15mm ones. Six different number plates. Mm. And some tank numbers. Now, I think what it's would they go on, then? The number plates? Yeah. Um, on these. Uh, tanks did have number plates. Did they? Yeah, I wonder on any of the models where they're showing, no, and you've got... It's not no. what we think of trucks and jeeps and stuff like that, you know. I seem ones. to remember it said somewhere, maybe it was on the website, that this was a Hungarian and Finnish decal sheet, but I'm not seeing... Oh. It may be that the Finns also used the, the Balkan... Well, that's not like your, your typical Balkan cross, is it? Though? No, it's slightly different. But I thought I'd seen those on Romanian tanks. Hmm. Or Hungarian tanks. So I'm a bit thrown not, by that. No, I'm not sure about the insignia on the... On no, the... no. So, you know, uh, if, you know if you know more, then you are a cleverer man than I am. I definitely know that Hungarian one is a late war one. That one and there. And it's painted the over the, the cross that came on it. That's cool, though. You get two yeah. in there. Awesome. Absolutely, Happy and days. that's going to do you plenty of vehicles. So we'll have a look at the cards. We start Bunch with of cards. the. You do get this fold-out migration Hungarian. So this is your nineteen forty-four plus Hungarian list, which gives you. So if you were to buy the card set for Hungarians, you see there are several potential formations here. The one that we're going to be looking at today, which comes in this box, is the Zerini oh, assault well. gun battery. But there are several other options in here. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and also it has your support options and it tells you supporting Germans. So these may, that's interesting. Supporting Germans, it says, but this is Hungarians supporting Germans. A German force may field one compulsory unit from a Hungarian formation as a support. So it's not these have Germans in support, it's these can support Germans. Okay. Which is an interesting idea. Wasn't it the other way around normally? In what, like, the Hungarians have been posted somewhere, we've just bolted them with a couple of squads of Germans. Um, I don't know. Um, I, don't... I think by because of the kind of logistics train problems that you have in the Second World War, mixed formations are really Very quite rare, rare, and they're never a good idea. No. <laughs> you want everybody firing, everybody in the same, same area, page. using the same bullet, the same artillery round. You know, and that actually, really interestingly, is one of the things we're going to see in this formation that I assume was a real problem for the Hungarians, is they've got many different types of ammunition and spare mm. parts going on here. Bit of a mishmash. Yeah, yeah. Compared to, like, the Soviets go with that. T-34 is pretty much everything, mate. You know, right. one, one chain of supply that works for everyone. But interesting. So, should we have a look at the Zerini itself, then? Yes. Yeah. This is like, is this a super new kit? Is this brand spanking new? This this is the one brand, brand new. Like, I don't even know whether you can buy these in a platoon box yet. You really? probably can. So the Zerini Assault Gun Battery HQ. This is quite an interesting formation. These are always quite difficult to explain because they've got lots of sort of naught to ones, ors, yeah. ors, ors, ors. So I'll put something up, uh, probably cover Johnny B's head with some information here. But essentially, your Zerini Assault Gun Battery HQ is just one of these vehicles. You then have to have one Zerini platoon, one platoon which can be either Zerini, Stug or Hetzer, and another optional third platoon which can be Zerini, Stug, Hetzer, or a 75 mil anti-tank gun platoon, which I assume that is a Pac-40 with you know in Hungarian Whoa, service. Yeah, yeah, that's your that's your optional. So it's interesting the kind of mi mishmash of vehicles. So this vehicle then, the Zerini, you get have a look at the sprue because it's new. It's in grey plastic. So, yeah, it's a neat little sprue. You know, there's not many parts on here at all. Looks like it goes together very, very nicely. Single gun. Um, now, it, what it has done, though, is it's done that thing that some of the Battlefront kits do. Oh, where the side armour... Yeah, go on. The side... Not just... I like it when the tracks and the running gear are a single piece that glues onto a lower hull. I'm less keen when the upper hull has to fit to the side. And the reason for that is you end up with this three-dimensional gluing problem. Yeah. Um, that you that you've got wet glue still setting in different, and you have to do it while it's still wet because as you move around, and it's just much more prone to cracks. You have to be really careful with your cleanup. How, how, how about you, John? Um, I I love 
really quickly building things and, yeah. and then destroying them in the process. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I've also noticed that they've they've done the, the thing that you hate and put the put the uh, sprue bits on the on the tracks where they when they join. No, no, they're on the they're on the inside. That's okay. Oh, you're okay the with that. Gates, it's, no, it's, it's not when they're, they're on, on the tracks. It's when they're on, the sprue gate is on the outside. So when you cut it off, you're left with you a little bit a little of a chunk. mark. Yeah, and trying to cut neatly along a track. Okay, pad. so they've done it. Oh, they've done it. They're right. doing it right there. They're, 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 yeah, learning. Yeah. they're learning. Absolutely. So I mean, these track sides, you can see it is keyed. There's a long bar that goes onto this lower hole, so it is going to fit easily. It's just the slot in those those different because what you have is the is the the rear plate. The two sides and the top all wet at the same time, and, and you're going to squeeze it a little bit to make sure it's right. It's got a few interesting angles along there as well, yeah. which I think would make it again but, interesting. It's not just slapping a flat. But fortunately, the sides across the the upper the upper surfaces are very flat. It's much more problematic with like modern IFVs where these top bits are not straight lines. Mm. They've got little bits of equipment and dinks in them. You can just run a knife along there fairly cleanly, fairly flat. I think it will go together well. And then the skirts on there. Yeah, ones. this is like weird. They obviously adopted this from the old Germans and thought, yeah, hey, they this did is a good idea. absolutely. Um, I think. Well, I think in the early part of the war, the skirts come in to to stop anti tank rifles. Right. They don't stop anti tank rifles completely, but, but they'll tend to deflect the bullet a bit. Them, right. Yeah, um, and tank rifle in and of itself is a is a is a terrible idea. So I've just put a quarter inch hole in the side of the tank. The thing is that there's a lot of space inside the tank which is dude. Yeah, there's a fair amount. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and a well aimed anti tank a tight, round is still going to kill a, a kill a gunner or yeah, a driver or and rattle around in there and so forth. So doing a little bit, and the Soviets used them on a very large scale. Um, but later on in the war, as you start getting shaped charges like bazookas and so forth and Panzerfaust, again, a skirt encourages that to detonate outside Prior the main armour. Yeah. yeah, so it continues to be useful, not for its original purpose, but it's still useful. Now, another interesting feature of this sprue is I'm seeing two guns. Is there two guns? There's two guns on here. There's the very, the very short... Oh. Uh, with the recoil mechanism, and that is the Zarini 2 with a 105mm sort of howitzer. <laughs> um, whereas the lower one, the, the, the single long gun, is the Zarini 1. I, I wonder which one it's telling you to build in here. The Zarini 1 was the original concept, but um, I don't think they ever, they ever actually made any other than prototypes, which was the Tank Destroyer version. Only got one gun profile on the card, which yeah, is a 105. Yeah. So they've provided it as an option Ooh. on the kit. A what if? As a, as, but that is a what if tank. As I said, there may have been some um, prototypes built. They may have even seen action, because I mean, Hungary was overrun, right? They might, they might have used Last the, the half sort of, dozen yeah, prototypes that they had. Get them out the door. Um, yeah. But but fundamentally, the production value, this vehicle, like, there's a lot of late war stuff, which is kind of a bit fantasy, to be honest. You know, it never really saw service, or wasn't really produced really in large for. numbers, or whatever. But this definitely did. This was something that got used. And as I say, it was the Hungarians looking at what the Germans have been doing with the Stugs, the assault guns. I was about to guns. say, it looks extremely Zug-like. Oh, I mean, obviously, yeah. naturally, it's an assault gun. Yeah. There's only a certain amount of ways you can mount a gun to a tank hole. But, yeah. is the, I mean, did they... Is it their own design? Is it, it is their own design, yeah. So, um, there's, there's, there's something which, again, it's one of those things that often baffles historians and especially baffles tank enthusiasts and war gamers. And the Germans never gave out production licenses for their military vehicles to their miners. Okay. To their allies. They'd build vehicles and give them to them in some cases. Right, but They'd not, sell them, not but they them. never allowed them to produce them. Until like 1944, September. Like, oh, right, do you want the blueprints you know for yeah, these? Here you go, guys. Like, mate, we're, not, we're not going to be able to produce these in serious <laughs> numbers. Um, but realistically, the problems that the Hungarian armoured forces had were not just the lack of the equipment. It was the lack of heavy industry kind of behind that oh, right. to make it. Right. So, you know, even if the Germans had given them the capability... They would have been able to roll out a handful. Yeah, well, they've been able to build many at all anyway. Because this thing is riveted. Yeah, I did notice that. Um, so, 
rivets to a modern viewer look terribly dodgy. It's like, surely that thing just looks like it'll fall apart if you hit it. <laughs> yeah, if it goes so, too fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Apart. Just shake itself loose. The thing is that it, it was a lot better than welding. Okay. And what had happened in the th in the 30s, I think, there's been sort of new welding techniques. People were starting to prove in, in like live tank round demonstrations that welding was as good as riveting. Right. That it wouldn't just, you know, if you get hit on this weld, it'll just it's all just The plates collapse, fall apart, yeah. You know, um, I, I don't know a lot about welding, but I know welding had moved on. Right, okay. And suddenly they're trying to convince people. Uh, but ships were largely still riveted. You know, Liberty ships are welded, I think, rather than riveted, and they don't last very long because of it. Hmm. But the thing about rivets is one rivet doesn't weigh very much, but a million rivets weighs quite a lot. Yeah, you can add weight. And, you and your add... rivets have to be riveted to and in a frame. Would it take Which again well? adds weight. And I wonder if the rivets train a welder is, is, you can get going in a couple of days, still supervised or whatever. Yeah. To train a rivet, uh, rivets are hammered in by two guys with yeah. big hammers, synchronized. You know, this is this is really skilled work. Not skilled in the like highly technical work. But skilled just, in just like a lot of practice yeah. for me to be able to strike a hammer exactly half the interval to get the all of these rivets in. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so the fact that this tank is riveted is just one of the indicators of the kind of level of Hungarian industry at this point is was it ever going to be able to make panthers and things like that even if it was given a license which yeah. it was later on but this is something they could build they did build it was used and it's got a pretty respectable amount of armor and we've been talking for a long time without showing you any stats so we sorry talk about yes this the is stats the key thing of the Zerini right so the stats on the on the on the HQ then um, the motivation is three fearless and the skill is veteran both at three up but because she's an assault gun the role is quite different she's not intended for that close in work the self-propelled gun has got a counter attack rating of five and uh, an assault rating of four so they're slightly worse stats so it's a hit okay. of four this is not inferior crew yeah in fact and it's interesting that these have got I'm, good yeah. stats but i guess although hungry doesn't have a massive armed force and doesn't have a a, a, a a huge military tradition they've still not got large numbers of these vehicles they're picking the very best people out of the nation right. to man this inferior okay. equipment do you know what i mean so like, this is the best of the best going here. The best of the best. With a tactical move of 10, terrain dash 14, cross country 18, road dash 20, and crossing on three. It's fairly competitive. I mean, she's not slow. She's not fast, but she's not slow. So the main gun, 105 millimeter, can be fired as in direct fire roll or as an artillery <coughs> bombardment. As a bombardment, uh, you've got anti-tank power of three, which is pretty good, and fire power of three up. And in direct fire, you've got a halted rate of fire of two, only one moving. Ouch. And tank power of ten and a two-up firepower. It's also got the brutal forward fire and heat and slow firing rule, which means she's pretty decent as a tank destroyer. Uh, but 105 mil is a fairly big gun so for World War II. If you think the, the Panther's got a 75, sheer... this is a short barrel, but it's not even a short barrel. It's kind of a howitzer barrel. But it's not a long barreled high velocity, yeah. but it's got a heat round as well, which means you don't have the um, the enemy doesn't get improved armor over 16. Th you know, this will comfortably fight the T-34s and stuff like that. Wow. With an anti-tank power. Uh, and the Brutal makes it a pretty decent at digging out infantry as well. This is not a bad vehicle. The points do reflect that. This is six points for the HQ. When you take them as a platoon, just cross-checking, the numbers are all the same. Still got that front armour of seven, side of two, top of one, which is comparable to the Stug, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, and she's still fearless and veteran. The platoon comes only one formation, three of them for 16 points. Yeah, there's not like a two, three or four option, right. whatever else. Yeah, that's it. three, three of three these for 16 points. And you can have up to three of those in a single company. The next thing, what's interesting about this formation is it's giving you the option to have all of these sort of random vehicles. You've got a German vehicle and you've got a Czech vehicle in German service coming up. And I suspect what happened with these is the number of German vehicles of individual types that were issued to the Hungarians are quite small. So there's 20 of these and 10 of them oh. and, and 50 of them and, and so forth. And so what they've done, rather than try to create independent battalions, which will 
reduce in strength to becoming useless is they fed Just them in cobbled as, as platoons or companies within other formations. So actually, as weird as it looks to have some Stugs, some Hetzers and some Zerinis, they probably did look quite a bit like that, those formations. Because yeah. they just had to spread these bits of German equipment out, really. Um, or, or they could only form them in platoon-sized units. Uh, so... Mm. In this set, you're going to have your second platoon. Stug is a good one to compare it to because uh, we can have a look at the kit and we can talk about the card for a direct comparison. True fact. So the Stug card that it's given us here is for the anti-tank gun version with the 75mm long and the skirts. So she's got bazooka skirts, she's got the forward firing rule, 7.5. And again, it's three Stugs for 17 points. So it's one more point than the Zarini. The stats, fearless, veteran, careful, 731. So the side and rear armour is slightly better. Right, plus one there. And the gun has got an anti-tank rating of 11 rather than 3, uh, uh, 11 rather than 10, but firepower is 3 rather than 2. And it's not got the heat round. So it's better most of the time, but sometimes the same. I think this really is all right there because you've got the options with the 105. You have. It does have the longer range as well. It's got 32 inches rather than 24. For the direct fire, yeah. For the direct fire. For, you know, so for, paying, for your extra point, you are getting a little bit more. You're certainly getting the range. range yeah. yeah. So it's a solid inclusion. What's interesting about these is fearless motivation and veteran skill. These are probably better than Stugs in German service. <laughs> the crews in them are more motivated, yeah. which is a little bit weird. As to the sprue, I don't know how many of you haven't seen this. The Stug's not appeared in a lot of the kits recently, but it's a fairly old sprue. Has this one... Has it got a date? Has it even got the tongue on it with the date? It has. It's 2014 sprue. Oh, right. She's nice. It's got that design concept that we have with some of the other... Um, Battlefront stuff where they make a single sprue which has got the different versions on different halves of it But where they put that information is a bit weird on this one. Can you see here John? It says early and late They're just in little buttons in the middle of the sprue. Oh, yeah, the upper yeah, hole. yeah, yeah, yeah. Early, early and late, early and late oh, there. Wow. So um, the uh, the upper hole structure is slightly different on the on the later one There's a little bit of a bulge looks like an armor bulge just where the where the cupola is and I think the the Hatches are perhaps slightly that is differently like, in arrangement. It, that's, it's proper that's rivet so, head differences. Yeah, there's like yeah. one hatch opens one way, and then on the other one, it opens the opposite. Yeah, that's yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. You've really got to look to see the difference. Absolutely, and and then the the other components on the bottom part they're common to both. I think it might be. It's got a lot of yeah. guns on there. Now, in terms of the guns, again for the early and late versions, you've got two. You've got oh, two gun yeah. options right, two gun for options, each of the two versions. Yeah. So the shorter of the two uh, gun options is the 105. And again, you've got an early and a late one. And the mantle is slightly different. And then the longer of the two is the anti-tank gun version. Yeah. So you see the short one. Look, see, it looks a little bit fatter. Like a, a solid, weird, boxy thing. Yes, and, the other and one I think that's like the stuff. earlier one. The one that's a bit more rounded is the later one, I right. think. Yeah, assuming that the early and late things well, are in the right yeah, position. Well, yeah, if it continues. And then the last thing that's different about it is the machine gun, because one of them, I think, is the later one. It has a remote control turret. The machine gun oh, had that? has got a little gun shield. Yeah, well, it's, so it's remote control in terms of it's it's controlled from inside the vehicle, but I don't think it's like radio All right. control. <laughs> I don't you know whether mean, it, you, you can push the button. And yeah, I don't know how much more of it right, is okay. in a bar that you can twizzle right. and a button inside. I'd, I'd be Not interested to see if anyone's seen one of these in a museum and it can actually For show real, how real. that works. Yeah, because you know, remote control makes it sound really quite I think, sophisticated. I think that's the problem with yeah. I'm, I'm thinking but I, now. It's I think like, it's where the pull with the fire right. is like. Meh, 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 meh. I don't know. <laughs> um, but there was a problem. With the, the Germans had this kind of assault gun idea is that they wouldn't be anywhere near the front line and they didn't have machine guns, the earlier ones. And then? And then they started to realize, no, 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 we need to give, everybody needs a machine gun. Ba battle. Well, who, you may says, not intend for them to be that no. close, but... <laughs> but... But they're going to. And increasingly, the assault guns are designed to support the infantry. They're, yeah. they're in close, and they get used a lot as fire brigades in the late war because they're fundamentally a defensive vehicle. So if an enemy breakthrough is taking place, you get a couple of uh, tank destroyers or stugs or whatever, and you hide them in, in, in woods at a crossroad, and they're going to knock out a lot of vehicles, and then they're going to bug out. Yeah. 
you know, and Strugs are very good for that. Very low profile, decent anti-tank power. They're easy to hide. They operate well in small groups in that tank hunter role. But not stalking, waiting, ambushing. Oh, literally just... Is there an ambush vehicle? Yeah. Park yeah. and pop a shot. Absolutely. Well, uh, yeah. In war lot, games, turrets don't make as much difference as this. In, in real life, people really care about having a turret in real life. But in war games, it's in front of me. I'm all right. Yeah, I'll do. That was the Stug. So many assault guns, Kaiser. So many. If, like us, you enjoy Battlefront's games, Flames of War and Team Yankee, one of the best ways you can support the channel is to buy some of their crap from us. Check out our website, modelingforadvantage.co.uk. All profits, which are quite small, go towards supporting the YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. So the Hetzer, really cute little tank, this one. I like it. Uh, it's four points and you can take three, four or five of them for 12, 16 or 20. She's still got seven front armor. She's still got three side armor, just like the Stug. She's got 11 anti-tank power. It's probably the same 7.5 millimeter centimeter pack 40 that you have on the Stug. Same stat line, certainly. Looks to be, yep. Yeah, two halted, one moving. Four oh, it's, got, it's got overworked. It's got overworked. Is that because of the internal... I assume that either the space inside is very small or usually they're just down a crewman. They're oh. missing a guy inside. I mean, this is a small... Um, it looks platform. ditty. This is a late 1930s tank design that's in serial production for Barbarossa. <laughs> um, the 90... The, Panzer 38T, which this is based upon, which is made by the Skoda works in, in the former Czechoslovakia. Would, would that have come with the 7.5 on its first release? It's no, no, it's a Czech 47mm gun. Right, so the, it's still a small chassis with a massively big yeah, gun. Yeah, and, and that's what why you use tank destroyers. The extra weight that the turret provides often causes limitations in terms of the gun size. If you mount right. that weight straight on the hull, you can usually mount a much gun. bigger gun. Okay. Okay. But obviously you have the, the limitations. But for four points, she's still careful hit on a four. So the veteran crew, but only confident motivation. Yes. She's still got the, the self-propelled counter-attack problem. Five but points. what's follow me? She's got a, a huzzah special rule. The follow me is on a three plus, which is interesting. The follow me is about getting extra move. It's a movement order. And yes. I think what you do with that is you move the commander forwards four inches. Oh, and then you, you roll... Then Roll the dice and see if the other's following. <laughs> but he goes forward anyway. He goes forward anyways, <laughs> and it's a dice roll to see if the others follow you. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now, that re you probably... The problem with the follow me use that in the roll game. <laughs> is the blitz rule is usually just superior. Yeah. But I think that this is after movement, and you maybe don't have the minus one to hit penalty. You maybe can't do it. Actually, I need to check that. I need to look at that, yeah. I think you might not be able to do fall, shoot after a follow me. The, there's only a reason why this rule doesn't get used very often. Right, the yeah. Blitz, is, but, blitz uh, is generally superior. First, yeah. first time I've come across it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, she still moves 10, 12, 18, and 20, but crosses on a 5. So this is one of the problems with it. It's a fairly light chassis. Mm. There's a lot of load on those on those fairly narrow tracks. Um, if we look at the Sprood engine, yes. see that? She's a, she's she's lovely. This is a sprue Cute. that's that looks. I don't know enough about this particular, the many variants on it, but I'm seeing many guns on here, or at least more than I see three guns. Oh yeah, at least two in mantlets like the Hetzer, but another What's one you can one? make a Marder like variant with this. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. The Marder's a a tank destroyer. This is a double kit. Yeah, this is one of those kits that'll make you a few different 2020 things. 2020 hits a Marder 3, yeah, okay. Yeah, the Marder 3 is a pretty late war Panzer Jaeger, um, and that's got a very different, um, it's much more of a anti-tank gun on top of a tank hull. They're still fairly exposed, it's not room for the crew and yeah. so forth. Yeah, and you've even got, which you don't you don't get in a lot of these, is you've, you've got some, some tank rounds. You see, you've got, you've got some strips of shells. Scanning, oh yeah, okay. That yeah. must be for the if you yeah, for the, the for the open top version. Yeah, so you can see. Yeah, um, Hetzers seem to have been fairly popular with the crews. I think because they're pretty good survivor, but the amount of armor for the size of the target. Well, it is quite diddy. So would that? Yeah, and it's got it's got a, a good slope. So I don't think it's got that much weight of armor. But when they look at ballistic, they look at performances of armor. Uh, it's normally. Um, 
They'll say, so th th when they set out a specification for a military vehicle in World War II, then we want a 40 ton tank that's got 50 millimeters of frontal armor at 30 degrees. So All it's right. like, if the shell's coming in at a 30 degree angle, there needs to be 50 millimeters of armor against that angle. Right. So that, that is different if, it, if your armor's like that Flat compared to like that straight. compared to yes. like that. Yeah. Um, Hence why you get all the slopes. So we get to talk about sloping. Yeah. Everybody knows about sloped armor. And there's a lot made of, of Sherman's, but particularly T-34 is a massively superior vehicle because it's got sloped armor. Well, it seems like they went overboard on the Hetzel. <laughs> it's that whole thing. It's just like a pyramid on the tracks. <laughs> exactly. The problem with sloped armor is you lose vast amounts of interior space. Yeah. But as you know, when you go up in a loft, exactly. there's that bit of the side yeah. you can't It's get not to. that people didn't know, it's that there is a design choice being made right. here, uh, about just how much of a slope, how much how space. How much do you want to... Yeah, and how much that, that, that slope, if that's if you're at this angle, then there's more of it, that's longer. Crew how much more does it weigh? How much space do you like lose? This. How much more machinery, power plant do you need to push that vehicle along? How much bigger of a silhouette and profile has mm. it got? How many more can you fit on a train? Because it's longer. Oh, yeah, you know, there's, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things to consider. Uh, ultimately, the sloped armor wins that argument. But what you end up with is a lot of really cramped war <laughs> vehicles, yeah. so then they can get the sloped armor in. Well, go. And um, I think the Hetzer, this Hetzer, the cross check on a farm is a problem, to... right? Because yeah, any though... what? Because any hedge stream. Anything. Low bridge, anything. Crossing on a five with a platoon of vehicles means you, you're not getting through for several turns. I hadn't consider. I hadn't considered bushes. I, I'm only thinking of forests, sir. Uh, moving and, in, moving in know. or out of forests. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And for a tank destroyer that wants to be in an ambush position and then move out of it, having a cross check of five is going to cause you a problem. Because mm. you're, you're, you're going to not going to get everyone. <laughs> you're not going to get. Well, in, in three vehicles, only of one of them moves, yeah. right? Um, that's that's Maybe if there's just a, drive around. a yeah. liability with this vehicle, that is what it is. Mm. The overworks isn't a huge problem, but I think she's a solid choice, absolutely solid choice. Happy to have them. Are we through the assault guns now? We're through the assault guns. We can talk about the real that tanks. were many, many assault guns, as it is an assault gun platoon. I said, mm. assault gun battery, in fact. So, we've got one more vehicle to talk about. Ooh. Oh, it's a big cat. The Splendid Cats. <gasps> right. So, Panther. 29 points for three. Or 19 for two. Uh, Panther in Hungarian service is confident, but has that Hodar. Three up, and she's trained. Careful here. Careful. Front, front armor nine, side of five, top of only one. 10 inch tactical move and crosses on a two. The other movement rates are there for you if you're interested. The 7.5 centimeters got a halted rate of fire of two out of 40 inches. Anti tank power of 14, Boom. firepower three up. None of this overwork malarkey no. forward firing. It's good at what it does. Panther. Boom! See the cross check on the Panther? It's two plus, mate. Yeah. It's got the weight, isn't it? <laughs> I think a lot of it's to do with uh, up or power to weight ratio as well. So it's got. It's like this momentum thing can, this thing can drive through a house. Yes. Um, that doesn't mean Don't it won't get any damage that. from doing so, but it has the power, you know, the the uh, the both in terms of energy and motor. So I see this as sort of a premium German tank, right? This yeah, and the Tiger. Yeah. What is it doing in the Hungarian force? Why have they got a Panther? Yeah. Well, Panther's a really funny one to war gamers because we we Panther is a premium tank, right? I don't know what it costs you in World of Tanks, but it actually is a pretty no, Yeah, yeah, maybe. But, but, but it, you know, so it's I mean, very heavily armoured, top, yeah, top of the range armoured vehicle. Outperforms most armoured vehicles that are not crazy big, yeah, I don't know, IS-2s, that kind yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah, the thing is, Panther is Germany's 1944 medium tank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, things have, have changed gear, haven't they, somewhat? Yeah, yeah. because they've got, they've got a fight. They, so in, in that everything's team, moved up as they as they they fight they start fighting the Soviet Union they realize that they're that your Panzer twos and your Panzer early Panzer threes with the short fifty mil real problems against T thirty fours KVs they start looking at serial production of a of a Mark is it a Mark five or a Mark six start looking at the the next generation of main battle tank 
a term that will become more common later, medium tank. And because it's got a bigger gun, it's got more armor, bigger yeah. engine, the weight has gone up. She's a heavy tank by weight classification, but she's a medium tank by role. She's not a breakthrough vehicle. She is a replacement for Panzer IV, mm. which was replacing Panzer III in the earlier period. And the production numbers tell you many thousands of these were made. So this is not, not a late war few hundred. Uncommon, right? No. no, this is entirely replacing the Panzer III and Panzer IV line. Slowly, the Panzer III and IV have been phased out of production from 1943 to be replaced with Panther. Okay. Because Panther is what you need to beat the Soviets. That, this is the new norm. Yeah. This is the new because norm. Because everything is escalated. That program is never complete because of wartime shortages, because serial production, it takes time to spool up <laughs> and, uh, you know, to wind yeah. down. And that's why a lot of Panzer three and Panzer IV production goes into Stugs and, and other things. But this is going to be the new tank. Mm. Um, and, 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 and largely it is. I think in 1944, you've normally got in a Panzer, Panzer regiment, in a Panzer division, one battalion is Panthers, one battalion is Panzer Fours. Okay. But in things like your SS ones, you've got all Panthers. All and the, maybe some, all the big toys. You've got all the better toys. That's the, the objective right. is to replace them. And presumably in 1947 they had a they had another idea of what was going to come next. Yeah. So this isn't that special a tank to the Germans. No. This is just the this new is one. The non, this is the, the Panzer IV, you know, it's, it's the... Yeah, yeah. It's not that it's, it's not, not a great... Got. It's yeah. not that it's not a great vehicle, but you have this really bizarre situation where in the West, we're still using Shermans. So Panther seems really good. Yeah. But then, but they're using T-34-85s the over in there. Yeah. In the, in the Soviet Union. They, they've already up gone to 85 mil on their mainline tank and they've got heavy tanks. We also don't use heavy tanks really. Why, why is that? Is that, do you reckon? Oh, it's logistics. It's shipping. That's, uh, that tank oh, came yeah. from Detroit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll just roll it out the back no, down mate. the road. No, that's, that's got a long way to go. A long way to go, yeah. You can only fit three on a boat. <laughs> yeah, and, and the maths on that is just is just is just mental when you look at you know, like how many less vehicles you're going to get at the front line if you just increase the weight wow. by 20%. Because it, 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 you know, and then the fuel consumption, and then all of those other things, you're going to have a Sherman where they don't have one, and that's going to win you a battle. Yeah. That's that's the idea. More but yeah, Panther. So the fact mm. that they give <laughs> the fact that they give the Hungarians some, fine. Now I had a look at the Tank Encyclopedia YouTube, great YouTube channel if you want information right. about tanks. It's usually pretty well researched, and okay. it's usually quite open when it's like it's unclear sources okay, vary, you know. that kind of stuff. He doesn't claim. And then he doesn't just say, this is what it was, and then move on. Because if it's iffy, he'll tell you. But he reckoned that there were five Panthers <laughs> given to the Hungarians in 1945. Five out of five. the new norm of the, well, the tank. I think Temi said more than five, which means that we can confirm oh, five. five. There may be a few more. There might be a few more. Right. Yeah. Okay, so that's not that many. <laughs> that's not that many. So if what's, you, what's if five going to do? I mean, well, it's a squadron of... But the Hungarian army is a significant part of the front line against the Soviet Union. So what they're really doing, what Germany's been doing since 1942, is filling out gaps in its own army with its allies. So really, they're Hungarian dudes fighting a German war against a German enemy, so they're giving them the equipment. Right. Because they found in 1942, it was the Hungarians, Romanians, Italians, they don't have high power anti-tank equipment, and they just get steamrolled. Yeah. It isn't that they're poorly motivated, it isn't that they're poorly trained, Just it's that they've got 1920s pattern 40mm anti-tank guns to fight IS-2s. Yep. You can't yeah, do that. Not gonna it's not well. going to work, mate. It doesn't work. <laughs> and even just having a hand, even just having a little bit of capability compared with zero is a huge game changer. Mm. So, but yeah, they're really just filling gaps in their own. Plugins. They're not German formations. No. But they're in, they're part of Army Group South. In the vicinity, in the, to make a difference. Right, go on then. Let's move on. Did we? Uh, did we tell them the numbers? Did we show them even the sprue? I'm pretty sure we did the numbers. I don't think we showed them the sprue because we it's, maybe didn't show them the sprue. It's, a, it's, it's an older sprue. Is having a quick look. Uh, 2019 Panther A. 
There's three Panther models, D, A, and G. Interestingly, they're not in alphabetical order because they're short for German words. Yeah, I was about to I say, think, yeah. I think the Panther the A is the is. middle one, and I think that's the one you'll find in Normandy. I found this is a 1944 one. So it's got Zimmerit paste on it, you see? This is an old kit, man. This is 2012. It, it is an old kit, which is interesting, but not all of it, look. This bit says oh, Panther this is A. 2019. 2019. The tracks. This bit... Because this is part, for anyone that doesn't know, part of the Battlefront's development cycle. They've slowly been moving to plastic. So this was issued with a bit of resin at oh, some point, I think. Oh, okay. You know, um, and was designed to kind of fit in with those. And you'll see how the, the keying on the tracks is quite different. It just kind of slides in. So you can imagine that goes out to a bit of resin that you filed that it's shape into. It's just got into. an arrow Yeah, on it. just slots in. And also, this is where you can see how they've grown as a company and learn about the plastics. There, there are some issues with this, and a big one is the whole machine gun. If you look at the whole machine gun, it's Ooh. in like a ball mount. Ooh! How got, do you clip that out without absolutely pasting it? It's not just got carefully. one. It's got two, there's nowhere for the pressure to go. It's got two. What do you call them? Gates. Gates. Sprue gates. gates. Got yeah. two sprue gates either side of the flimsy little machine gun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think on those, no it might be the light's not strong enough. I think the two are actually different. I think one is smooth and one is textured because yes. one goes with this version I, I can for the Zimmerit. That. And one goes with the, with another version which doesn't have the Zimmer. So this sprue is common to several. Um, but it's interesting when, as I said, when you look at this sprue, you can see how far they've come along. There's loads of bits on here, but the sprue gates are a bit tough for the fragility of the equipment. It's very crammed in um, and to stop things going up. Whereas this this 2019 Panther sprue, there's just so much more confidence around. I'm free. What's, what's <laughs> so you've much got, space. You've got space. There's no pressure on any of the pieces. The... They're held together nicely. They're putting the sprue gates in places which are easy to clean up. This is a this is an interesting part of their kind of growth as Progress. a company. I think, yeah, really okay, nice. Okay, okay, okay. 2019. So I think this Panther came out with the Panther versus Sherman, but I'm not sure. You know, the previous tanks mm. game. I think that was before 2019. Because with this and a different one of these sprues, you can also make Yag Panther, which hasn't come out yet. Ooh. There is, there is, there are more than one Panther sprue out there. That's the Panther, anyway. Mm. That's going to take up a lot of your points, though. Twenty nine points yeah, is a big part of the formation. But if you fight in the Soviets, you need something need that can kill the KVs, and that's going to be it. Will it be enough? Last unit in the box, then. Last Still, one. things to talk about after this is the 105 millimeter artillery battery. Boomsticks. Interesting. Uh, Hungarian service. They're calling this 105. The Germans would call it a 10.5 centimeter. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, the yeah. same Fair gun, point, though. Yeah. Um, so, looking at the sprue of that, many of you will have seen this before. Um, this also, I think, came in the previous German kit. So, this is yeah, going to build you. It says German. German 105, uh, 10.5, sorry. German 10.5, how is it? Yeah, okay. So you've got two barrels on here, the earlier and the later one. We'll just have a look, look at the instructions yeah. on there. The muzzle brake is the later one in German right. service. I don't think there's any stat differences in that. Um, and it is indicating that you should make this one with the muzzle brake, actually. So it is a, it is, they didn't just give them, presumably the, the outdated ones that make you can have this, well, the barrels are worn out. The, the picture, on the card, it doesn't have the, the muzzle brake. It's the one without the muzzle brake. Yes, interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gun unit, large gun with gun shield. So again, they're careful. They've got four up infantry safe. They're trained, confident. Uh, 72 inch range as a barrage with an anti tank power of three. A lot of these vehicles have got top armor of one. So anti tank three in a bombardment has got a chance of knocking these tanks out, even the bigger ones. Yeah. Um, and with a fire power of three up. Uh, and the direct fire mode only getting to take the one shot anti-tank power nine that's not the best is it by this point in the war i think front armor seven is common on most vehicles but it's a chance it's a chance yeah because it's only six or twelve for uh, two or four points um what would i say about this kit a couple of things to think about with this kit uh if you don't know there are there are two types of wheels on there Oh, yeah. Do you know what that's for? Do you know why well, that is, like John? One's got tyres. One's got tyres. And one's not. And one's not. Yeah, so that's in general service, the, the, the air the air tyre 
as normally uh, for the motorised services. And the just the steel rimmed is for the horse-drawn stuff. Right. Which is interesting, because there definitely are those two different versions. They do exist, we know that they exist, they have survived the war, we have examples right. of them. But what we also know is, then this is where our artillery guns gets a bit more messy, because the concept behind all of the anti-tank battalions, even when they were towed, vehicle, towed mm -hmm. guns, was they were for rapid redeployment. And the fact that they were designed with a pneumatic tyre was an important part of the design process. And they were motorised even in the infantry divisions. Because the point about these is there isn't enough for them to be everywhere. They need to, so to get to where need you to need them when you need them. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly which vehicles... Now, in the infantry divisions, almost certainly these are field guns. These will be horse-drawn. Um, in Hungarian service, I don't know. I don't know where these guns fit within... The formation. There's a support right. option. You can do it whichever way you like. Oh yeah. Obviously, this force that you're getting here is a mo is a mobile formation. So maybe they would have had the ones with the pneumatic tires. Probably, if you're a real grognard, though, the Germans will have provided one type or the other. Yes. Not both. <laughs> and I don't actually know the answer answer to would which. Would have been steel or rubber. I don't know. Whoa. Rubber. It, it, even though the Germans were making relying on synthetic rubber for years by this point, it's an extremely expensive resource. IG Farben have been working on synthetic rubber from the 30s, um, but synthetic rubber extremely expensive to produce. Um, so steel it is then for the Hungarians. <laughs> so uh, uh, quite, <laughs> quite possibly, but the Hungarians, for all I know, had their own yeah, synthetic yeah. rubber plant and not a lot of use for it. <laughs> and, and, uh, who knows? Ooh, who knows? Squeaky. Um, so with those, though, you get some. Uh, the new thermoplastic dude bros. They look chalky, man. They, they, they're, in, they're, they're still, you know, Are I'm still then? I'm still not sure. I am about to paint the gun crews for the British. Which the is latest which the are in this, which is the stuff. first time I will have painted some of the thermoplastic crews. Yeah. Um, okay. They changed their plastic type at some point. And I, what I thought was the new thermoplastic was actually just a different looking plastic. Right. <laughs> As I've seen a lot more of this now. So this is definitely yeah, what it you is. You can see it. So at first glance, it kind of look it kind of looks chalky and it makes you feel off-putting. But what, yeah. I, what I kind of did with, these, with those British figures and doing the same with these is to try and look past that because they just don't look the way you expect them to look. Right. Um, the, t the, is, the level of fidelity on them is pretty good. Yeah. You know how sharp the lines are? You know, you can see the fingers in some of them. And me, as you, much as you can for check, this scale. Check I like the this, dancing dude. Did it, did it, did it, Saturday Night did it, Fever did it, guy. Did it, what's that all about? Yeah. I want more of them. Can I have a whole platoon of them? A whole platoon please? of Saturday Night Fever guys. Uh, so they're the gun crew. Got five poses, um, which, which is solid. And one of them is pooing. Yes, one boy is pooing. The one who's Not pooping. Not you can see, but he's, he's definitely got a bit of a... Oh, uh, that's a real shame. So that's that. That's probably he shouldn't be on a base. I don't think he's supposed to be sat on the seat of the gun. Oh, but perhaps because of the boo. way this material works, he needs they maybe that. They maybe have to cast him onto a base. Right. What is also interesting, looking at these again, thinking about it, is these don't have round bases that fit into Warlord. Oh, is that a common thing? Then? Bases on the. They're not circles. They're more like like old fashioned. They're I mean, just, they've got, it they've looks got a base like that covers their feet. Whatever the hell was, yeah. was sculpted at the time. They're not perfect circles that slot into their perfect circular base. Now, I don't I don't know if there's a there's a deliberate reason for that. But there's some thinking. I mean, this is this is a relatively minority product. This is Hungarian gun yes, crew. Yeah. You're not going to handle a lot of this. And that. you have to be realistic with a product, with a company the size of, of, of Battlefront. And Warlord, a lot of them are the same size. So your German late war Grenadier 1944 model is their premium product. That's going to be really nice. Mm. It's going to have all of the options. They're going to sell millions of them. How many Hungarian cannon crew are they going to make? <laughs> what kind of level of quality can you really expect? when they're gonna sell them in small numbers. I, mean, I feel I feel it's an oversight though, is the thing. I think they right? should have the same round bases on all the models. Because I'm not that familiar, obviously, you do all the The British artillery crew in this sculpt 
are on rounds. I have okay. literally, I have built Just one of those them. in the past week. They were on rounds. Hmm. If the paras weren't, I didn't notice, and I think I would because we handled them. <laughs> but that's possible. Um, but the detail looks good. I like the Saturday Night Fever pose. Oh yeah, they do. They do look a bit German, but then I guess a lot of the nations that were using that kind of very similar looking yeah, helmet, people are wearing tunics yeah. and loose-ish trousers. What is different though, is the Tank Commander Sprout. There is one of those, which I can see. In the Warlord resin. Now, unless my eyes are really weak, these are five identical dudes. Uh, I will confirm that they are. They've definitely like, got the same nose, hat, and pose. Whether one's got a moustache and I can't see it very no, well. No, no. I'm pretty sure that's a copy and paste. I'm pretty sure that's a copy and paste. And these are these are curious in terms of the in terms of the sculpt. So if you've seen, and they do provide two of the hard plastic German tank commander screws, just whipping which is probably them out a perfectly now. good substitute. Or if you're just planning to use these models as Germans, because you can. Yeah. Apart from oh, the yeah. Zerini, yeah. everything here is German. Um, so you might do that. So they tend to cut them off flat at the waist on mm. most of the tank commander screws. These guys, they've got bums. They have actually got bums. These these guys these guys are seated. Um, they look more like the kind of crews you get in armoured cars or open topped vehicles because there's always that risk you might see a bit more got of a him. bit of thought, yeah. So, so you they put a little bit a little of thigh bit in or something. Um, Why is that? And they do have the kind of strap in across the back. And stuff like that's nice on a 15 mil model because it just provides a point of colour, contrast mm. on an otherwise, you know, and things look, especially with the camouflage patterns, look very similar. Extremely. <laughs> very similar. <laughs> so anything like that that kind of makes, it picks out that distinctive national identity, <clears throat> a different looking, a strikingly different looking helmet, things like um, crosses different across fatigues, the fatigues, bits like that. Yeah, yeah, because the differences are more in the, the cuffs and the insignia and a slightly different yeah. olive green. <laughs> You know, how different Sherman Drab is from Field Grey to somebody who isn't a War Games painter. I don't mean to us. Yeah. I mean, if you was to show them to the, you know, describe this colour, describe that colour. Like it's greeny colour, isn't it? Yeah. Greeny. What's that colour? Well, it's sort of yeah, greeny colour, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. I, I yeah, don't know. Not, not don't too know how much difference between. How much. So that's those, as I say, you do get two of these, which you've seen before. You do get four bases and base blocks for your artillery crew. While we're here, why don't I, and a few of these guys have come off while we've been handling. Why not see if they actually fit in? Does it fit? Uh, no, but it'd be very easy to fix. That's very just that, a that's, little that's bit just of a slipping snip. a little bit out. But they're very much it's a signature flames of war thing. Yeah. They, they, yeah. they make bases with holes in the size of And you just plug the your little dude bros in. Just plug your dude bros in. Alright. Um it's a, it's a little bit of a shame that it's not it's not a big deal. It just feels like a, an oversight. Yeah, but it's like it wasn't say, part of the brief to the model maker, the designer. It's not a biggie. It's not a biggie. It's not a biggie. Um, no, because you just you probably can fill you that can work mostly with it. a bit of PVA or whatever. You put your works. basing material on. So, put your base plugs. What do you think then? What do I think? Be brutally honest. I think that this is an interesting formation to use. I think that this. This formation has a legitimate historical reason to have such a bizarre mix of yeah, units. Yeah, okay. Um, as often they give you three of these and four of them and five of them, it's like, they're not in the same formation. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, these things would this all works. appear in the, in, in the same formation. Battery. Certainly you get battle casualties, the plugging in uh, alternative companies. My concern about this is, is value, to be honest. What we're this at, box then? feels like, for the compared to the other... Eight, nine, ten starter armies. This box is light. Thirteen vehicles and four guns. Seventeen. If you were to compare that to the German one we just had, it had a couple extra vehicles, two extra guns, and an infantry platoon on top of thirty. You know, it had, I think, eleven vehicle, eleven tanks, 11 four tanks. half shacks, and six guns and an infantry platoon for the same price. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. There's no infantry or anything in there. No. And they've only given you three of the five hetzers as well. So. That help. <laughs> yeah. I feel if it had two more hetzers, it'd look a little bit better. So these are coming out at nearly four pound seventy per tank or gun team, whereas normally these are these are comfortably under four pounds. Okay. Uh, for example, um, I don't think it's a bad way to start a Hungarian army at all. Um, you definitely don't want two of these boxes. 
because the kind of overlap that you're going to get. If you're a German player, do you want this box? Not, not really. For the vehicles, you can't. Not really. Well, you can. No, no, you can use all of these yeah, other you things. Can use everything, yeah. But you, I don't think you can use the Zarinis. Um, so, if I wanted to start a Hungarian army, this isn't a bad place to start. I think like a lot of their kits, even the Team Yankee stuff, they need to be putting an infantry platoon in these things. Yeah. Flames of War without an infantry platoon. Which it, I'd like it, to it, play it without an infantry it's platoon. A, it's a fun way to play if your opponent is also of that mind. But it's, it's, it's quicker. an infantry based game, right? But if you have got a platoon of infantry sat on your objective, you're basically just playing the <laughs> game in hard mode. Because <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> you just dig those boys in for a handful of need, yeah. 10 points of infantry, dig them in there and just Boom. sit there. And unless they've taken some heavy guns and make an effort, they're not getting them out. Yeah, I mean, you know, that, that's that just is, the way it is. That is the way this game is. Um, but yeah, I don't okay. think it's bad value. I don't think it's a bad way to start a Hungarian starter force. I think it could have done with an infantry platoon, even if it's metal. It's probably metal, maybe thermoplastic yeah. at the moment, because it's a minor nation. I don't even know whether they're new scopes. They're probably uncomfortable putting it in. Yeah, they made they made that decision. They like to showcase the best stuff in here, and I get that. They should have given you a couple more. Another platoon is there any? Another, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, give you the five hexes that they mentioned. Yeah, I don't know. It needed it yeah. needed something else oh, well. or something that's harder to buy. So if you look on their website, you'll see in the ne next generation releases. It's because these guys use a lot of other people's equipment. Mm -hmm. You get like artillery crew packs, and they've got like three different types of artillery crews right. in the pack because you're going to need both as guns which come in British kits and you're going to need packs which come in German kits so, so you just buy an alternative crew for other kits okay you know so stuff like if they'd have put a both as a couple of both as guns in here and some Hungarian crews for them they're things that aren't easy to get otherwise because they're mixing kits I think just a little thing I'm not sour about it I just think it could have been a little bit better and I don't want to tell you I think something's yeah. awesome if I think it's all right and I think it is all right they just done better ones, that's all. I mean, how else are you going to start a Hungarian force? Absolutely. <laughs> you want to play a Hungarian Zarini Battalion? This is where you go. Get this. Definitely. <laughs> all right, guys. That's us. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye-bye. If you like the kind of stuff that we do, rather than just waiting for the blooper reel, why don't you head on over to our website, modelingforadvantage.co.uk. We've got affiliate links to places like Whaling Games there, where when you buy your models, if you buy through our link, we get a little bit of kickback and it doesn't cost you a penny more. Very nice. You feel me now? Yes. Yes, play. Sexy time.